In late April, 3M Company reported earnings that disappointed the markets. The stock has declined by more than 20% since then. In this video, we examine 3M stock in detail to determine whether the company's stock is a buy after its earnings disappointment. Before we begin, I invite you to subscribe to this channel and like this video, which will help more people discover SureDividend's investor education efforts. With that out of the way, let's dig into 3M stock. Let's first start by talking about 3M's business model. 3M sells more than 60,000 products that are used every day in homes, hospitals, office buildings, and schools around the world. It has more than 90,000 employees and serves customers in more than 200 countries. 3M is composed of five separate divisions. The industrial division produces tapes, abrasives, adhesives, and supply chain management software and solutions, among others. Safety and Graphics manufactures personal protective gear and security products. The healthcare segment supplies medical and surgical products, as well as drug delivery systems. Electronic and Energy Division produces fibers and circuits, with the goal of using renewable energy sources while reducing costs. Lastly, the Consumer Division sells office supplies, home improvement products, protective materials, and stationary supplies. 3M trades with a market capitalization of $100 billion, and generates nearly $33 billion in annual sales. Moving on, let's talk about the company's first quarter earnings results. 3M's first quarter results were very poor as the company's top and bottom lines both declined. Earnings per share and organic growth guidance for 2019 were both revised downward, and job cuts were also announced. The company's earnings per share totaled $2.23, which topped estimates by $0.27, cents, but declined 11% from the previous year. Earnings per share was reduced by $0.72 cents per share due to litigation-related charges. Revenues were down 5% to $7.9 billion, which was $162 million below expectations. Sales for the industrial segment dropped 2.8% due to weakness in several businesses, including industrial adhesives and tapes. Safety and graphics was down just 0.1%, as declines in commercial solutions, transportation safety, and roofing granules was offset by organic sales growth in personal safety. Healthcare grew 0.7% on the strength of food safety and health information systems. Drug delivery was down double digits and had a 2% negative impact on the segment as a whole. Electronics and energy was lower by 3% as electronics-related sales declined 6%. The consumer segment improved 0.9%, due mostly to organic sales growth and home improvement. 3M returned more than $1.5 billion to shareholders in the form of dividends and share repurchases. The company also announced that the industrial and safety and graphics segments will be combined into a single segment and electronics and energy will be renamed transportation and electronics effective April 1, 2019. 3M announced that it would cut 2,000 jobs in a restructuring that will help save the company at least $225 million in annual costs. The company lowered its earnings per share guidance to $9.25 to $9.75 from $10.45 to $10.90 previously. Achieving the midpoint of this guidance would result in a drop of 9% from 2018's results. Organic growth is expected to fall to negative 1% to 2% for 2019, down from positive 1% to positive 4% previously. Shares of 3M declined by 13% immediately following the release of results and fell further in the coming weeks. Despite the very obvious current challenges facing the company, there is a strong case to be made that its lengthy track record of excellence will continue making the current pullback in the share price a good opportunity to add shares to your portfolio. In the remainder of this video, we will compare the bull and bear cases for 3M, beginning with the regions to be bullish. First, 3M has a very strong balance sheet, which will enable it to continue growing its dividend while simultaneously investing in returning its businesses to growth. The company earns a very high AA- credit rating from S&P, and its international business combined with its credit rating gives it access to debt at interest rates that are even lower than the U.S. government. With a low 1.7 times net debt to EBITDA ratio, 19.6 times interest coverage, and an impressive 20% return on invested capital which indicates strong competitive advantages, 3M is clearly a conservative long-term investment. Second, 3M is one of the premier dividend growers in the entire world. With 61 straight years of dividend growth and over a century of raising or sustaining its dividend without cutting it, including numerous wars and the Great Depression, 3M has as about as stable and proven as a business model as humanly possible. While some might think of it as an inflation-resistant bond-like investment, given its balance sheet and long-term dividend track record, it is far more than that. Its 20-year dividend 
Kager is a whopping 9%, making it a strong growth stock on top of its safety and dependability. Finally, looking ahead, its dividend appears to be very safe with plenty of room to continue growing as its payout ratio stands at a mere 57% of trailing 12-month earnings. Third, there is reason to believe that the company will successfully execute on its restructuring program and overcome its current challenges to return to growing earnings per share over the long term. Thanks to its balance sheet and ample free cash flow generation, it is able to plow about 6% of revenue into research and development, an additional 5 to 5.5% of revenue into capital expenditures. Furthermore, around 40% of retained earnings go into either growth acquisitions or share repurchases, both of which should add a strong tailwind to earnings per share growth. Furthermore, the company's aggressive cost cutting by eliminating 2,000 jobs, targeting inventory reductions, trimming capital expenditures, accelerating indirect cost actions, and combining its safety and industrial business segments into one should save the company hundreds of millions of dollars, if not billions of dollars per year, and expand margins by 200 to 300 basis points. Despite the recent bad news, management still believes that, backed by these capital allocation priorities, over the long term they will be able to grow earnings per share and free cash flow at 8% to 11% per year. Fourth, 3M's strong competitive advantages could very likely enable its business to not only remain resilient, but resume its long-term trend of strong growth. Its chief competitive advantage comes from its immense economies of scale, stemming from its large size, global supply chain, and the cross-product synergies it obtains from its broad offerings of products. This scale enables them to achieve industry-low manufacturing cost in most of the sectors in which it competes. Another significant competitive advantage comes from its decades of compounded intellectual property in its research and development program that it also leverages across its products. The company holds numerous patents, brands, and proprietary technology that gives it exclusive advantages over competitors. These brands include household names like Scotch, Post-It, and Ace, whose quality and firm placement in retailer and consumer businesses enable them to charge premium prices. Combining its low costs with its premium brands, 3M is able to achieve strong margins and remain well insulated against competition. Fifth, 3M's portfolio is currently positioned to outperform the broad market, as its portfolio is weighted towards faster-growing portions of the global economy in terms of both industry, sector, and geography. In particular, their exposure to healthcare should boost the company's results due to its superior profitability, exposure to geographies with aging populations, the rising trend of chronic diseases and surgical procedures, and demand for efficient management of large volumes of medical data. 3M recently further positioned itself for growth in the healthcare sector by making its largest deal ever to acquire the advanced wound care provider Acelity. At 15 times EBITDA after accounting for expected synergies, the deal is not cheap. However, management believes that further cost synergies will be achievable over the coming years and that the acquisition will position the company for a stronger competitive positioning to achieve and consolidate growth in healthcare over the coming years given that Acelity is the dominant player in this space and controls the vast majority of the available market. Finally, 3M's valuation appears quite attractive after the recent sell-off. Its share price has reached levels not seen since 2016, and its 3.3% yield is higher than it has been in years. Assuming no multiple expansion, the company can just hit the low end of its long-term earnings per share growth target range at 8% to produce 11.3% total annual returns when combined with the dividend yield. On the bearish side, the argument rests on the fact that the company's best growth days are behind it, warranting its lower valuation multiple. While few would claim that the business is bound for a continued decline, thanks to its fortress balance sheet and strong competitive advantages, its ability to generate strong growth rates could very likely be gone. One of the causes of this decline could be a weakening in their innovation capabilities and or a declining returns on investment into research and development. It is interesting to note that in 2018, their percentage of sales invested into research and development declined. This, in turn, could have a negative impact on the power of the company's brands, which rely on superior quality and performance to justify their higher pricing and stickiness with customers. A further cause of decline could be changing consumer preferences that the company fails to anticipate or adjust to meet in a timely manner. This could result in heavy investments in research and development that may even ultimately produce high quality products, but which fail to excite consumers as they have in the past, leading to weaker sales and dampening brand power, as well as significant malinvestment in research and development. Another significant potential downside catalyst is slowing growth in China due to trade war and other factors. Given that 3M derives nearly a third of its overall sales from the Asia-Pacific region, a Chinese slowdown will weigh material on the company's results. Another item to keep in mind is that after the Acelity acquisition, pro forma debt will likely increase to around 2.7 times 2019 EBITDA. 
While this is still fairly low, it is higher than the company has carried in a long time, which will cut into its ability to repurchase shares while they are trading at multi-year lows. When compared to the $4.8 billion of repurchases made in 2018, at an average price of $207.46 per share, it appears that management has not managed its buyback program effectively, and or this acquisition is not being done in a very timely manner. The fact that management is dramatically cutting its buyback program at the same time as its share price is steeply declining is not exactly a bullish indicator for the company. Finally, while the company has successfully weathered the worst that geopolitics and economics could throw at it over the past century plus, it still could suffer fairly significantly from a global recession. As a result, while its long-term outlook could remain solid, a near-term severe recession could still make its current price a bit high. One thing is certain, the business currently faces a slowdown as earnings are actually declining even as the global economy and the US companies continue to grow. Therefore, somewhere along the line, their business is failing to generate the same response from the customers as it has in the recent past. In order to achieve their aggressive guidance of growing earnings per share at greater than 8% per year through 2023, and accounting for this year's declines, the company will have to grow earnings per share at nearly double the pace that it has averaged over the past half decade, over the next four years after 2019, without the tailwind from tax reform. Given the slowing state of the global economy, and the other risks that we have already mentioned, this seems highly unlikely. While we do not believe that the business is headed for continued long-term declines, we do believe that it is prudent to remain guarded about the company's long-term growth prospects until management can prove its ability to return the company to its long-term target growth rate. Accordingly, we are lowering our five-year average annual earnings per share growth estimate to 5%. To account for this slower growth rate, we believe that the company deserves to trade at a lower valuation multiple than it is currently at. We are aiming for 17.2 times earnings as opposed to its current 18.5x multiple. If this expected multiple contraction takes place over the next half decade, it would reduce annual returns by 1.4% per year over this time period. This leaves us with an expected annual total return of 6.9%, making 3M a hold at current prices. Thank you for watching this video, which performed a deep dive into 3M stock to determine whether or not it's a buy after its recent earnings disappointment. We view the company as a hold at current prices. We invite you to subscribe to this channel and like this video, which will help more people discover SureDividend's investor education efforts. If you're interested in learning more about our systematic approach to dividend growth investing, visit our website at www.suredividend.com.